All right, peace, love, and love, guys. I got some great information for you to check out when it comes to your so-called alleged auto loan, which is literally a consumer credit sale and not a loan. But however, I'm going to show you one thing to identify. Uh, look into your actual loan, and then you see where it says uh, late charge, prepayment, security interest. All of this would be under where it's talk talking about the finance charge. Well, look at security interest. It says that you are giving a security interest in the vehicle being purchased. Purchase also means it's either it's something that's being taken or transferred by sale, could be by discount, could be by uh, you know, lien, mortgage, things of that nature, right? All right, so, but you see that they only took a security interest in the vehicle. They do not take a security interest in the financial asset, okay? So, as you look at this contract, this contract right now is considered to be a promise agreement because it's on a promise to pay something at a definite certain time, uh, and it has the parties listed, things of that nature, right? So this is a promise agreement. And in this promise agreement, they're going to uh, make a security interest on the actual vehicle. Well, here's the thing. This is actually being done with a dealership. And since this is being done with a dealership, all right, they're only actually making the, the ones making the claim. It's not the bank. So this is between you and the dealership. There's no bank here or involved. You didn't sit down with a banker and sign uh, the actual instrument along with them. They were never present. So that means that the dealership has to do an assignment of the rights and interests of this contract, which turns into a financial asset, which is also a security, okay? Which means for protection, assurance, and indemnification, because this security is supposed to be used to raise the funds, okay? to uh, raise the capital funds for this mutual funding account, okay, to settle the account, all right? Now, uh, with that being said, you go down and look at security interest on further uh, in your contract about additional, additional information, and then it will show in there that uh, the vehicle, again, you give us security interest in the vehicle and all parts or goods put on it. So that literally means that they can sell the vehicle and they're trying to say they can uh, get use it to receive any form of, uh, you know, monetary value for the debt that supposedly is owed. But here's the thing, though. Again, there is no security interest on the financial asset. Nobody has made any claim to it. They're just going by the UCC rules of having possession. But what happens when you actually make the claim? And since they don't have a claim, and since the dealership is going to uh, transfer its rights and interest in the contract, so and then the bank is also going to sell it to another bank, and that bank's going to go and put it into a special purpose vehicle or what you considered a, um, uh, you know, a securitization trust. It'll go into a trust, okay. And when it goes into this trust, it can't come out. It's going to issue out from that point what they consider to be uh, secure marketable, secondary marketable securities, which are what you call, guys call coupons. And these are the actual dividends that's supposed to be kicked out for <clears throat> the indemnification of the security holder, which is actually you. You're the security holder, okay, because you're the registered owner uh, of the actual securities, all right? So um, they don't have the right to enforce the instrument, guys. So what I like to do is I like to go make a claim in the UCC of the actual so-called note that they make a claim on, and then uh, I put the value and everything like that in the collateral, and I like to make the actual company, or you can even say the bank, if that's who you want to deal with, say so. But you can literally make them the, uh, the debtor in respect to trust property because they're still holding your property. It is your trust property property. Don't ever forget that. It is an intangible property. It's a financial asset and it truly belongs to the registered owner, which is you. Okay. So now they have no right to enforce an instrument that they do not hold or have a right to interest or claim in it, right? According to UCC 3-301. So with that being said, this is fraud. You can actually take them to court and sue them immediately. Now, also, Look into your contracts and see if you see anything about the description of coupon, what to do with coupons. Is there Has there been anything said about it? And since there's not, this is also failure to disclose, 
okay? And they wanted you to enter into contract with deceit and wanted you to act upon that, which is uh, misrepresentation and it's considered fraud, okay? So, you guys, go check out your contracts. I just gave you a whole actual way to uh, basically get this fully offset for you, all right? Peace, love, and law. You guys have a great day.